Hey people, so today's video we're talking about buffers. Buffers, if you guys don't know what buffers are, you have your gear, you have your levels, this is how you improve your damage, we have buffers. Uh, buffers are ships that give some kind of skill towards not only them, but that benefits the whole fleet. So in this video, we're going to have a lot of ships here that I'm talking about. We're going to talk about buffers, vanguards, backline, there's a lot of them. So let's get right into it because it's going to be a very, very long video. So vanguard buffers. I'm sure most of you guys um, are already aware, but vanguards have a lot of buffers. A lot, a lot of buffers. There's so many things going on with vanguard buffers. It is utterly insane. There is a lot of buffers, a lot of buffers. So let's go right into it. It's going to be a long, long topic, so I'm not going to try to carry on for too long. Let's just get right into it. First one. I'm pretty sure Helena, everyone uses Helena. She's one of the most commonly used buffers in the game. She is insane. Radar scan plus, nothing to create, nothing to um, talk much about here. 60% chance to apply a debuff to the enemy where they take 40% more damage for 10 seconds. That is really, really good and by far the best sort of quote unquote buff in the game. Obviously, it's a debuff, but it's the best damage amplifier in the game. Nothing to say about this one easily the best ship in this game when it comes to amplifying your damage for whatever content you're doing the best one as of yet next we have assault order this is carried on by cleveland and kent um i don't have a kent invested right now but i'll talk about cleveland assault order so this is uh, a like a slightly uh weaker version of the sg uh sg scan um it's a 25 percent chance to increase all damage by the fleet instead of a debuff its damage increased the whole fleet by 25% for 8 seconds. Now it's a little bit shorter, it's not as strong, and it's a lower proc rate as well. Extremely, extremely low. Not reliable, but definitely is something you can look at if you want to do some kind of like crazy uh, bursting content or whatever, and you can uh, reset multiple times. That's one of the go-to choices as well. Cleveland, Assault Order, or Kent, Assault Order. Next, Kirov. Now, Kirov, this is a very, very unique ship because it won't say right here um, in this skill in, in particular, but it does. It's on there. It's I've checked the wiki. I've checked the English one. I've checked the Chinese one. It's there, and I've tested it myself in other content as well. She has a skill where this barrage right here it approximates after uh, 15 seconds, and it is basically when it lands, it applies a 15% debuff on the enemy so they take 15 percent more damage when uh they're getting hit by this barrage it happens at 15 seconds and it lasts for um eight seconds very very good now the issue is with this one is that it's a little bit earlier compared to like the big big buffs like hell in the scan and assault order but if you use a uh, sg radar or whatever you can make hell in the scan 16 seconds and this lines up very very well with uh hell in the skill right here so very very good skill I highly recommend this one if you guys want to do any kind of like burst setup with this Assault Order, Key Rob, and Helena. That's basically the go to. Next, we have Rune Moves. Rune Moves, I'm not sure I'm going to talk about this one in particular because a lot of people know of her already. Basically, every 15 seconds, she uh, sl uh, stops the enemy and they take 10% more damage. Or, um, uh, yeah, they take 10% more damage for um, 6 seconds for all enemies hit by this. So, very, very powerful, very, very solid. And Rune Moves is also a good ship as well for damage and durability. Can't go wrong with Rune Moves at all. Very, very solid ship. We also have Helena Meta. Now, Helena Meta is one of those ships that um, you're not going to build her for purely uh, um, debuffing and whatnot for like damage amplification. Obviously, some people are going to do that and that's fine. But you don't really want to do it for that one. It's just she's just there for like applying damage or whatnot. But. She has a 30% chance to increase the damage taken by enemies by 10 seconds, but for 5 seconds. Uh, 1 second shorter than Rune Moves is RNG as well, but there's multiple pellets when it comes to the Shadow Wing Touch, so, or Shadow Wing Torch, so most likely it's going to hit. Obviously it's RNG still, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty up there. It, it's pretty much always going to apply the debuff, because there's so many of the pellets when they get fired off. So it's not bad, it's just a five second duration that's very, very small. Otherwise, it's not a bad ship at all for when it comes to uh, damage amplifications and whatnot. Next, we have E-Girl. Yes, 
Um, E-Girl does do something. Not just durability, not just damage, not just having demon horns. She does something. She has an armor break. This armor break right here, if there's no enemies near her, applies armor break. Now, I believe armor break uh, in general is like a 6% damage increase for whatever. So, if you're doing like any sort of like heavy armor content bosses and whatnot and it applies armor break... Um, I'm pretty sure the armor break applies to all enemies and not just, um, yeah, it applies to all enemies. This is right there. So not just heavy armor, usually, uh, armor breaks for heavy armor. Uh, but 6% damage increase when you, f you do your damage or whatever for six, well, it should be, uh, not that long, but I guess it's permanent. There's not enough information on this one, but regardless though, she applies armor break is a 6% damage increase. And not only that, she does a significant amount of damage and she's very, very durable. Can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with that. Very, very solid. Obviously, it's going to take a while to get her invested, but you don't need her to be developer 30 to, to apply the debuff, so you can start on using her right away if you choose to. This skill right here. Next, we have air raid assistance. There's a lot of ships in this game that has air raid assistance. Uh, the most commonly used ones are like Ardent, uh, Stephen Potter, Yuguri, and Curlew. Air raid. So, I have Curlew invested right now, so I'll talk about hers in, in particular, but air raid. One of the best buffs in the game when it comes to carriers. While the ships afloat increases the damage to all carriers of your fleet for by 15%. Does not stack with other skill. Very, very good. Very, very good. As long as the ship's alive, 15% damage increase to your ship. Now, a lot of people use uh, carriers for torpedo bombing and stuff. So, if using torpedo bombing stuff, ships like Yuguri, who has a significant amount of stats and torpedoes, can do, help out the bombing setups when you're dealing with carrier things. Pretty, pretty solid. Pretty, pretty solid. Very, very good ship indeed. And I believe people use Steven Potter for like PvP and whatnot. That's also a thing as well, too. Well, I don't know, maybe PvP. I'm not sure. But I know a lot of people use Yuguri, so can't go wrong with that at all. Very, very good skill. Air Raid Assistance, very, very good. Next, we have Sirius. Sirius is like a weaker version of Air Raid Assistance, but the most important thing going for her skill is that she has accuracy in it. So, in here, it says increase the hit rate of... Um, God, wait, hold up. Okay, uh, increases the... F uh, okay, increases all your uh, carriers' by, uh, damage by uh, aviation by 10%. Increases their hit rate. There we go. That's what I meant to say. Increases their hit rate. Accuracy. I was going to say accuracy, but I was like, whoa, I can't read right now. So my bad. Uh, increase their accuracy by 10%. So slightly lower than air rate assistance, but accuracy improvement. Very, very good. Definitely a good ship indeed when it comes to kind of air carrier setup for bombing. Very good. In case you don't trust that accuracy, the 10% here helps out a lot. Helps a lot. She also applies uh, other things going on for the fleet as well, too. So, there's that. Well, that's for herself, though. But, whatever. Anyways, moving on. Alright, next we have Aurora. Now, Aurora herself doesn't increase damage, but she increases accuracy. The Dawn, or the Light of the Dawn, makes it so evasion of de uh, destroyers and light cruisers are down by 20%. This is very good. When using uh, battleships that uses HE, this is very, very good. You're going to see her a lot running... Uh, in fleets for um, Helena Meta recently because she makes it so the enemy or uh, your battleships have an easier time hitting and they're not going to miss their shells and volleys. So by yourself, it's not a damage increase, but it's a damage improvement for consistency. So you're not going to miss hits. That's the most important thing here. Very, very solid ship. Very, very core for HE fleets like uh, Richelieu, JB, ships that excel in HE. That you're building for uh for light armor uh uh boss fights and whatnot, very very good there, very very good ship for uh light armor targets. This skill right here, core, very good. Next we have Kashino. Now Kashino herself isn't a significant ship here. Uh, she doesn't really do much aside from these skills, but they don't really do anything for your ships in general. It's what she can equip. Um, she can equip these special auxiliaries that increases. Your firepower by 10% to your backline, or she can increase your aviation by 8% in your backline. Um, as of right now, there's another cargo ship in the game uh, that came out for the uh, collab or whatever. So if I can find it, repair ship? No, other, 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 other. We have another cargo ship here. Uh, Ritsuko is also another cargo ship here too. But Kashino is very, very tanky. 
Uh, I haven't looked at her stats for uh, Ritsuko yet. I'm not sure if she's super, super tanky. She could be. I'm not sure. I'll probably post it right here. Um, but she's also another choice as well, too. If you don't have Kashina, also a very, very good choice when it comes to uh, any sort of like, oop, <laughs> any sort of like a bursting content that you're trying to do. Very, very good there. So uh, that's Kashina, and that's the collab ship as well. Next, let's talk about the vanguard buffers no vanguard buffers for vanguards my bad vanguard buffers for vanguards so there's a lot here i'm not trying to talk about all of them in particular talk about the ones that i significantly use the most or like the ones a lot of people use the most so the first one was london london right here now people ask about london all the time when i make videos or whatever and why i use her all, all the time it's very very simple this skill right here artillery command increases firepower of your vanguard by 15 percent pretty solid right nothing crazy about that Works very, very good when using a fleet of heavy cruisers. Why? Heavy cruisers have some of the highest or has the highest uh, firepower of Vanguard ships in your in the whole game. So when you get a 15% firepower increase, you're going to get more out of that 15% compared to like a DD or a CL. So that's why this ship right here, if you guys don't know, I use London with my Drake setup in St. Louis or Sa uh, San Francisco and Drake and whatnot. I use her with pretty much all heavy cruisers all, all the time because this skill right here is very good. And not only that, you get the most out of it when using it on, using it on heavy cruisers. So that's why. Next, we, again, we have San Francisco. San Francisco, more the, one of the more recent ships recently, very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. This skill right here is absolutely ridiculous when she's in the front she's tanking for everyone when she's in the middle she's healing for everyone and when she's in the back she boosts damage by your for your whole vanguard by five percent this is a very very good skill one of the best skills in the game for uh, buffers in, in general very very good definitely a good ship in general this skill right here is insane insane you want to slap on like a london a uh, um a london and san francisco a uh, setup and boost your drake damage it's going to be massive. 15% firepower for uh, Drake. And then 5% damage increase to Drake as well too. It's insane. She's going to do so, so much damage. So, so much damage. Next, we have Noshiro. Noshiro, one of the... Everyone knows about Noshiro, right? She has a... Uh, um, uh, she has a torpedo damage increase um, for crits. So, improves crit and whatnot. Insane. Um, she's also very, very durable, and it increases evasion as well. Um, for what you call it, solid, solid, solid ship, very good. I'm not sure if people still use her in PvP though. I think she's fallen off. But if you want to use her for like uh, Ibuki setups, because Ibuki has a uh, has crit damage and whatnot going for her. Uh, obviously, it's not 100% crit rate. She can close the gap a little bit. 12% crit rate increase. It helps out Ibuki out. Makes her hit more crit damage and whatnot for tor torpedoes. There's that. So that's vanguards. Um, obviously, there's more vanguards to talk about in general, but that's just some vanguards that buffs in, uh, that buffs the ship. The 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 more uh, commonly used ones, at least in the game, at least. There's obviously more. I'm not gonna talk about them, but there's more in the, sh in the game that's buffing ships and whatnot. I won't talk about those. Next, we have backline. Backline doesn't have as many buffers as Vanguard's, but they still have some uh, buffers in the back. It's pretty good. Shinano. Now, Shinano has uh, um, a lot of things going for her kit, like Sakura Empire increases and whatnot. Also, by the way, I don't talk about um, flat faction stuff. So, the backline buffers, there's like there's like Queen Elizabeth, Nagato, um, uh, Bismarck and whatnot, um, Enterpri not Enterprise, uh, New Jersey, that buffs sh uh, ships for the whole fleet. Um, I'm not going to talk about those because obviously faction buffs are significant enough on their own. They buff a full six ships most of the time except from Prince of Wales who buffs primarily uh, five other ships because she's um, not USS herself. I'm not going to talk about factions. Everyone knows about faction leaders and whatnot, and faction buffs. There's that, right? So she not again. She um, not only does she she have the all all this carrier stuff going on in her third skill. The red skill right here, three percent damage increase. Now she not does a lot of damage by herself. She also buffs uh, other Sakura Empire carriers. She also um, excuse me, 
She also uh, increases uh, DD stuff going on for her kit as well too. And she makes it so enemies take 3% more damage. That is very solid for a carrier ship. Very good. A lot of things going for her. A lot, a lot of damage as well too. Powerful, powerful ship. Powerful, powerful ship. Next, we have Hood. Now, Hood is a very, very, very outdated ship. One of the oldest ships in the game. Uh, but she does have a reload buff right here. Now, the reload buff right here is 40% and lasts 8 seconds. Not that crazy nowadays, but it's still very, very good. Um, herself, she does like 0 damage because her barrage is normal. And she has very, very low firepower as well too. Not to mention that she doesn't have any kind of steroids that can buff her. She's fallen off a lot. But if you want to do any like kind of reload um, setups or whatnot, she is definitely one of the go-to ships, if not the go-to ship when it comes to reload buffs and whatnot. Next, her successor, Hal. Hal right here. Her skill makes it so, well not this skill, this skill right here. 20% um, increase accuracy and reload by 8 seconds. Now this reload is half of hoods, but it gives accuracy as well too, which is very, very important when it comes to end game content because uh, your battleships, are going to miss a lot. And they boost the accuracy of BBs and BCs by 20% for 8 seconds. So if you're um, if you're lined up properly, you should be able to always get the buff going, depending on the gun you use. It's a very, very good buff. Very, very good. Reload as well too. Makes it so you can squeeze in those extra volleys and whatnot on the end game content that has you fighting for like a minute and a half and so forth. So having that reload buff is very, very important. Not to mention, how does significantly more damage than Hood? Definitely, definitely a very, very powerful ship when it comes to utility. Next, we have Centaur. Centaur right here, a very, very good ship because she has this right here, Airspace Domain. When launching an airstrike, main fleet's aviation increased by 15% and increased firepower by 10%. So not only does she work for carriers, she works for uh, battleships as well too. 15% for carriers, 10% for backline uh, battleships, very solid. 8 seconds. She has a very, very high reload. Safe to say, she's pretty much always going to go first unless you're going against like... Or unless you're built to like have a lot of reload buffs and whatnot. She's pretty much always going to go first. So, very, very solid ship. Uh, but I would use it for carriers though because she's pretty much always going to go first from carriers. Easier setup there. But you can definitely use her for battleship setups as well too. Next, we have Shokaku. Now, Shokaku here... Um, she not, she's not as significant as uh, Centaur when it comes to like uh, damage modifiers and whatnot. She's a little bit weaker on that. Uh, not here to skill. Uh, but when she doesn't, uh, when she launches an air strike, uh, it makes it so your enemy, uh, your entire fleet increases damage by ten percent. Now, obviously, we have the fifteen percent aviation buff from Centaur. So this is about. 5% uh, weaker, not entirely because it's calculated a little bit differently, but it's roughly about the same. But the most important thing here is that she is an IJN carrier. And what I mean by this is that when you're an IJN carrier, not only do you have, um, not only does she apply a buff for everyone, or a debuff, or a, no, a buff here, my bad. She has Shinano's buff, and she has Nagato's buff, making her very, very powerful. And then she buffs them as well, too. There's a lot of mutualism when it comes to IJ and stuff. Now, obviously, I'm not going to talk about faction puffs in general, but she's very, very solid. Now, you can use her as a standalone as well, too. You can do like Arc Royal, Shinano, and Shok Shokaku setups as well, too. But it's not as good as Centaurs, but it's still very, very good, especially when you're doing a full IJ and setup. Shokaku is definitely very, very good. Now, here's a little bit of a off twist um, ship that's really, really good. Casablanca. Now, Casablanca right here herself is not a really, really good ship, but supporting wings is very, very good because it buffs it buffs aviation for other fleets that you're not using. So let's say you're using uh, her on the main, like the the like you guys know how like Perseus, Shinano, New Jersey has a like, procs on other fleets. It works the same way here. Um, it's 8% reload and aviation to other fleets that are not in this one. Obviously, it's weaker than OS because it's 4% there, but it's still very, very good. 4% for not, because you're not, most of the time when you get to end game, you're using pretty much only like one or two fleets aside from like big, big boss battles. This right here is going to help out quite a lot. It's going to help out quite a lot. So, definitely a really, really good ship. Not because of 
You want to have her in the fleet. You want to have her outside of your fleet. That's why. On our next list, we have Duke of York. Duke of York is a premier battleship for buffing. Why? Because of this skill right here. Um, well, not this one. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> this one right here. Uh, trepidation of destruction increases damage of this ship's first salvo by 50% and when the ship hits an enemy with the uh, salvo increases the damage the enemy takes by 12% 12% 12% is a lot for a backline damage increase 8 seconds as well too very very powerful now the issue with Duke of York primarily is that she has to go first for us to work and nowadays she's a very very old ship she doesn't have the highest reload so you're going to see a lot of battleships uh, in the 160 170 reload uh, zone even when she's ringed she still falls short behind some of the other battleships in the game so it works very very hard very very hard obviously um the gold fire control radar mitigates a, some a lot of it it makes it so it's easier to reload but it's still really really rough to uh, squeeze things in if you want to get the like, maximum benefits though you're probably going to use like an auto reload or whatever compared to like some of the big battleships out there like she's not going to outspeed new jersey she's not going to outspeed fdg she's not going to speed outspeed uh, georgia and whatnot um so having extra reload does help but she l lowers her damage out a lot uh, i say um, a lot of her fixes can be done if she were to have higher reload but alas this is an old uh old ship so it can't really be done but this skill right here is still very, very good. Even on the first shot, 12% damage increase uh, for the enemy, still very, very good. Very, very good. A premier ship for bossing and whatnot, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Next, we have Mikasa. Now, Mikasa right here is one of those ships that people aren't really weary of. But T cross formation. 60% chance to increase um, the damage of all battleships by 20% for 8 seconds. Kind of like a Helena, but it's it's half of the damage increase. It's 20% instead of 40%. But works the same way. It's RNG, but it's a 20% increase. Not to mention, if you want to increase damage even further, you can use a specific auxiliary called Z, Z Flag. Z Flag here gives uh, buffs to not only um, Mikasa, but to other ships as well too. If I recall correctly, it's like accuracy and firepower by 5%. You can increase what uh, Mikasa can give to the whole fleet even further. Now, obviously, I wouldn't use her particularly for um, a lot of content nowadays because her damage isn't the greatest. But she's definitely good for like burst setups. If you're trying to make one ship do a lot, a lot of damage, like you want um, New Jersey to uh, do well, you want FDG to do significantly well, you will use her to make their damage entirely, entirely different in a very, very good way. You want to have a lot more damage use ships like her and the last one we'll talk about today is going to be huga huga is somewhere in this fleet if i can find her somewhere in my dock space what's great about huga is you have artillery command very very simple skill increase firepower by your for your main fleet by 15 percent so you just have her there you just throw her there and it's a 15 percent increase to your entire main fleet by by 15 percent firepower so, that's it for that video. There's a lot of buffers in the game. Unfortunately, I can't fit all of them into the video, and I jumbled a lot. I'm trying to speed up my talking because there's a lot of shit I'm talking about. There's a lot of buffers in the game. Don't neglect buffers, guys. They're very, very good to have in this game. They help your damage increase a lot. So, be wary of that, guys. Enjoy fleet building. I'll talk about more about other ships in general in the game, but for today, we're talking about buffers and so forth. Damage buffers, at least. So, there's that. Anyways, see you guys in the next video.